welcome back everyone i hope many of you stayed on this this track with me i see lots of familiar faces as usual and i'm extremely happy about it because now we're going to talk about documentation which is really the cornerstone of any project and very important for open source projects so more and more people can join and pick up everything where it was left off and i think we also have a huge debt when it comes to documentation um, that's why I'm especially happy about the next uh, presentation. It's going to be a pre-recorded video this time. And we will see if we're going to have some questions and answers at the end. I'm not sure at this point. But if you have so many questions, if you have any questions, just drop it in a Q&A and we will reach out to the, to the presenter for sure. So about Anita, uh, I would like to say a couple of words. She's a developer. Uh, advocate and also a technical writer. She has a track record of championing diversity and inclusion topics on a global scale, and she passionately ac advocates for open source, uh, including uh, uh, cloud native DevOps documentation, um, community health topics as well. And she's active with notable communities like Chaos Layer 5, Sustain, and also the Good Docs project. And without further ado, I will start her presentation for you. It's going to load in just one second. Talk to you after the recording. Hello, everyone. Now, you'd agree with me that no matter how hard we try to make our documentations elaborate and informative, most users always end up going through external sources like YouTube videos or even reading through articles to better understand how our products work and how it benefits them. Now, this may have led you to ask questions like, is my documentation not usable enough for my audience? Well, in this section, we're going to be discussing on the topic, evaluating usability in technical documentation. A little bit about me, I am Anita Ihiman. I am a developer advocate and technical writer. I am also an open source advocate contributing to communities like um, the Chaos Community, Layer 5, and um, the Good Docs projects, which I'll be sharing most of my experience working on a landing page here with. Now, during this section, we're going to be discussing what is usability evaluation. We're going to look at characteristics of a usable document factors that influence a document's usability. We're going to talk about a writer's role in usability evaluation. We're going to move on to look at how to evaluate a technical documentation and then why we should evaluate documentation's usability in the first place. So let's get into it. Now, creating usable documents simply means ensuring that the various users that come across our documentation can actually use and understand these products at the end of the day, which is what they're actually trying to achieve, right? And um, for us technical writers, it can be really difficult to achieve this because we're always prompting to we're always prompted to put in so much information and so much context into documents with the aim of you know making sure the user um, achieves everything they want on that particular document. However, we end up um, with bulky documentations that become too informative for the users and then they dread going through the documentation at all. Now, usually these users don't entirely read through documentation. Regardless of the nature, whether a handbook, whether API documentation, whether insurance policy, users don't necessarily read through this document entirely. The only reason that, that most users come across our technical documents is to solve a specific problem, to get answers to a particular question, to validate a particular fact, or even follow instructions on how to use a particular tool or product. And so, the, why exactly or why exactly are we talking about um, usability evaluation? Well, first of all, what is it? Usability evaluation is simply a straightforward way that we use in measuring the efficiency of resources while ensuring user satisfaction. Now, um, it primarily focuses on how quickly and how simple it is able for us to, you know, uh, make the user's experience um, 
a lot more um, pleasant while going through that particular documentation, how easy it is for them to comprehend and also apply the product documentation in order to meet their goals at the end of the day. And this actually, we can determine if a documentation is usable or not based on certain characteristics. First, you have to look out for if the documentation is easy to learn in the sense that the user should be able to successfully complete whatever goal it is that they're trying to achieve on that particular documentation without needing any external instructions or um, um, additional screens in order to get the answers to their questions. Now, you also want to make sure that your documentation is engaging. Now, so many persons today have tried to, you know, um, incorporate new ways to convey information for their technical documentation that do not require writing so much text or putting in so much information. Now, this is a thing that a challenge that most persons have struggled with because you only write so much text that makes it difficult for people to skim through that um, document and get answers within a short um, period of time. But a, user, a usable document tries to make the experience usable, um, more interactive and engagement, engaging for the people that are actually going through it, either through use of infographics, through imagery, um, or even um, the use of architectural diagrams that better convey information. So as a user, when going to that particular page, you can actually look through the diagrams that are available and then understand the context that has been written down um, prior to that particular diagram that exists as well. And um, another characteristic is the effectiveness of this particular document. So you want to be sure that the user is able to like meet these goals that they're looking out for in a very short period of time and um, still experience the best um, the best experience or still have the best experience even while going through this particular documentation. So in a very short time where I come across that documentation, I'm able to skim through and get answers without having to you know um, scan through the entire document before I get answers to one single thing that I'm looking for or um, come across that particular thing that I'm looking for in your documentation. Another characteristic is its efficiency. Now users should be able to accomplish the basic tasks that they actually came to that particular documentation for. And at the end of the day, they're still pleased with the experience that they actually can come back next time because the documentation itself was able to answer their questions effectively and they can actually refer to this document at any point in time. Another characteristic is the error tolerance. Take for instance, you're writing an API documentation and uh, there are high chances that while integrating this particular API, there are certain errors that a user is likely to come across, but your documentation does not capture that particular error. And so as a user, I come across it and then I don't see any part of the documentation that says, okay, there are chances that I'll experience this if I do this the wrong way. So this is how to solve it. I'm going to end up going through Stack Overflow and um, other forms of um, other channels like Google or people these days even consider using chat GPT to get answers to most of the errors that they encounter while going through some of our documentations. So at, um, a usable documentation also like considers the error aspect of um, the project um, integration and um, captures ways that you can actually um, avoid all of this. Or if you encounter it, ways that you can also approach these errors and troubleshoot it at the end of the day. And then another characteristic is that it is satisfactory because the sole aim of this document is to make sure that the users that are going through this are pleased with the experience at the end of the day and um, can actually refer to this document anytime, any day. So your doc another primary characteristic that a usable documentation should have is that it should be satisfactory to both the users that are coming through that particular documentation and um, trying to use it to their own benefit. And then there's different factors that actually influence the documentation's usability. These factors come in two different forms uh, or take um, two different categories. The functional qualities, which talks about, which describes whether or not a document accomplished the purpose of or its goals. And um, there are some factors that you actually look at when talking about the functional, the functional quality of this particular document. That is, if it's accessible, 
if it's easy for people to actually go through this particular documentation and get uh, information immediately they come across this, if it is um, purposeful, if it is findable, if it is accurate, and then if it is complete. And um, going in depth, we're going to first of all look at the readability of our documentation. Why users come across um, the documentation, there, there are different individuals that actually do this from experts to um, the beginners, from people that do not have any um, form of disability or um, cognitive challenges to people that are completely okay. But at the end of the day, the question or the reason they're coming to that document is to actually utilize the product using that particular documentation. So you want to make sure that your documentation is readable and to ensure that it is also comprehensive and easy to you know, um, navigate, even for people with visual impairments, for people that have any form of disability that makes it difficult for them to um, go through that particular documentation. Then you also want to consider um, the accessibility part of it because you want to make sure that at the end of the day, your documentation the documentation delivers content through several channels and um, allows um, people with impair, um, any form of um, challenges to actually assess the same information as um, users without any form of disabilities. Now, this in, uh, includes having things like um, text to audio transcriptions, having like um, dark and light mode um, toggle, having um, headers that are actually prominent enough for people to look through without having to zoom in, and even considering things, other things such as um, language translations and so many other um, accessibility, mark, um, the drop downs, and so many other things that make it uh, easy for people to assess and navigate through that particular website. You'd also um, want to consider things like another. Um, another factor on that functional quality is um, the content quality. And the documentation should be able to highlight all necessary and primary information and also update a product that, um, and updates about the product that the user would find um, necessary and relevant. So you also want to uh, make sure that regardless of um, what document it is that you're putting out, whether a handbook, whether it is like um, a policy or release note, only the primary and key information to that particular needs are available on that document. A user wouldn't want to come on a release note and then be seeing how to instructions on that particular release note, or you wouldn't want to go to um, a glossary page and then you're seeing how to troubleshoot a particular page because like these things, um, that is not the right place to actually find those particular contexts, right? So you want to organize your documentation and put in the quality information where it can be easy to navigate and users will find it most relevant. Then you should also consider the intuitive designs and making sure that you put into consideration the structure of this um, content and in a way that it assists the users to easily find information that they are actually looking out for. So you should provide all necessary um, information in a way that makes it effortless for people to navigate through that particular architecture, um, documentations, architecture, and able to find things. Now that includes the use of um, drop downs, the use of search buttons, the use of um, the use of um, browsing, um, search and browsing options so that people can easily just look through whatever they're trying to look to or find whatever they're trying to look for. And if it's a kind of documentation that highlights like um, notable things that people should take note of, you could also try to write, um, use colors, you know, indicate certain things like warning sign, for instance, you can put the warning signs in a bolder color or bolder text that people can easily know that, okay, um, this warning is something that I must not dismiss at any point in time. Or if I want to go to the next page, this is where I get to click on to slide to the, um, to move forward or to move backward and whatever form of um, effort you make towards making the design a lot more intuitive for your users. Then you should also consider the language inclusion and the uh, language diversity and inclusion. The documentation should avoid non-inclusive languages and um, should be available to all audience. So at this point, we're talking about making sure that your documentation puts um, 
uses the right um, form of um, text that do not come off as offensive to most people, even while reading it. And if you have to like in include things like abbreviations, then your abbreviations have a way where they're like easily conveyed and explained so that people can understand that, okay, this is what they're trying to say. I don't have to go and Google any further. Then you should also have options for the language translations for different individuals that might not be English, um, English focus or might not be able to like read through in English language to also translate a language that is more convenient for them. Then um, you should also consider the visual and graphic contents that is creating content in the form of videos or pictographs to help people to, you know, um, read through and practice along while going through that particular documentation. And the primary, um, the primary need for most of this, um, non-conventional forms of conveying information that is through visuals and graphics is because you want to have that um, seamless experience for users. So I can skim through your page in a space of five minutes to 10 minutes and I'm getting answers at the end of the day without having to like invest an entire day just because I want to read through your documentation. But with the use of these pictures, with the use of these videos, I can just skim through, go over the pictures, go over the infographics that are provided, whatever it is that your, your project has actually um, put together to make it a lot more easy for um, less text and then more information in other formats. Your documentation should also be able to like highlight that. So um, the experience is a lot more easy for even people that want to just skim through that documentation and also get answers. They can also benefit from that document. While on the structural um, side of um, things, you don't want to make sure that your documentation is clear. And while reading through it, I do not have to like keep a dictionary next to me to, you know, um, Google every term because there's less, um, there's too much technical jargons. So I you want to make sure that it is clear and um, concise to whatever the uh, information that is expected from that particular documentation. Now, I want to use or share a bit of my experience from the Good Docs, um, the, um, my experience from the Good Docs projects where I'm currently working on a landing page template. Now, when I first got assigned these tasks, I told myself, I'm going to make it a, as informative as possible. And then I took it upon myself to, you know, go as far as putting in so much information. I did a lot of research and I put in all the things that I thought a landing page could have. And then I even went overboard to the point where I was talking about things that are not focused on what it is that I wanted to work on. Now, at the end of the day, I realized that I had a really, really lengthy um, landing page guide of over 24 pages which of course you you can tell that no one would be excited to read through a guide of 24 pages because you're definitely going to get bored you're going to get tired of um, going through the pages and then you're going to be asking yourself when does this end because that's the the point where most readers get to and um, so I submitted this to the community and I got like um, the same feedback from almost every single person that went through the guide um, this is a very informative document. However, I think we should work on making it more concise and like more um, focused on what it is we want these um, users to achieve at the end of the day. We want them to be able to use this template and not be scared of this template. And uh, I had to go back to my drawing board and then cut down on most of the information. And that was where I realized that I actually went overboard and I put in some necessary some informations that were actually good because they were necessary informations but they're not relevant to the audience at that particular point because the need was for that for documentation landing page guide was so anyone that comes across it can use it to create their own landing page template and um, their own um, landing page for their document so I learned the hard way that um, when whenever we're trying to like create uh, a documentation you should also consider some of these structural qualities, which is making sure that it is clear, making sure that it is concise, making sure that it is consistent and um, sticks to a particular tone. If that is something that you're looking out for, uses certain um, set 
tenses if that is something that you're also taking note of. And finally, it should be up to date. So it does not matter um, what information it is that you think is um, something you can neglect. If, for instance, you're working on an API documentation still, and that within a space of one month, a few a, a little um upgrade was made to that particular API. It's expected that your documentation should also capture that particular information that seems like it's something you can neglect because why a user might be going through it, they might miss out on that particular um, thing. Maybe it needs a particular command or it needs certain um, pointers in order for the entire process of integrating that API to be done. If the documentation is not updated to capture that, the user is bound to experience one error or the other, and the experience might not be so pleasant at the end of the day. So you also want to put into consideration that the, the documentation is up to date at all times, regardless of how negligible the new changes or uh, uh, implementations might be. And um, as technical writers, we also have like individual roles to play in ensuring that our documentations um, the uh, usability of the evaluation. So we should also consider first understanding the product. And as technical writers, we should be the primary users of a product before going ahead, you know, um, tell other persons about our document and tell them that they should use this document. So uh, whenever a product is released, as technical writers, you should work hand in hand with um, the engineering team to better understand each and every aspect of that particular feature, how it works, uh, areas that it should work, things that should be implemented, things that should be, you know, um, laid more emphasis on during the uh, implementation stages and all of that. Because while you're able to understand it completely, it will give you an edge towards conveying this information for the users and developers that might want to, you know, get on board that particular feature that has been implemented as well. So being the first user of this product makes it a lot easier for you to convey this information or this knowledge into written form for the larger audience. Next, you should try as much as possible to understand the, um, the audience that you're working with. Who, it's, who is it that you're trying to write for? Is it expert? Is it beginners? Um, are they persons that are more technical technically inclined or have very little to no technical knowledge. So like whatever it is that the target audience may be, you should try to, you know, develop your um your content to, you know, um, serve those particular audience or that particular audience in the best ways possible. Next, you should also consider like um, being objective with your writings. Now we've talked about the different target audience. You also want to make sure that even while you're writing for these individual um, audiences or writing to meet the needs of this uh, individual audience, you want to make sure that every single one of them benefits the same way from this documentation without feeling like, oh, if I if I, if maybe I had more experience in this area, I would have understood this documentation better. Or maybe it's because I'm too experienced. That's why the documentation feels like it is not informative enough for me. So you want to be objective with your writing to meet every single need of these individual um, target audiences and um, write according to that. Then you want to consider minimalist writing because yes, we want to have all of the information possible in our document. But we also want to make this documentation usable and want to make the user's experience a lot more pleasant to them. So um, consider minimalist writing, write less, use more of uh, informal ways of conveying information. We already, already talked about using graphics and imagery to you know, convey information. So you could use like um, videos, you could use pictures, you could use diagrams, you could use tables and anything at all that reduces the context that you're trying to, that uh, condenses the context that you're trying to you know, convey in a more interactive manner for the audience would be great. And at the end of the day, people can easily skim through that document without having to struggle to read through bunch bunch of paragraphs and bunch of write-ups that exist in like 10 to 20 paragraphs, just saying one particular thing. And then finally, as technical writers, we should also consider detailed test plans. And so what are these um, test plans that we're talking about? 
there are different ways that we can actually evaluate a technical documentation. Now, this includes use, carrying out certain usability tests, like um, one, the focus testing. So um, focus testing is simply a research techniques where a research technique where we assemble group of persons that are documentation experts, give them our documents and say, oh, I know that you're an expert in this area. Please read through this document and tell me what exactly the challenge is. Now, these individuals, it's just like having like a book club or specific to our documentation. Now, these individuals will all come together to give you feedback on what is wrong, whether the tone is wrong, whether the um, grammar is wrong, or even whether the context of the document itself is something that needs to be improved on. And this is a form of um, um, a form of um, practice that we always use in the Good Docs projects whenever we're trying to like work in a particular template or resource that we're trying to develop a guide to us. Now, because there's so many persons that you know come together in the community, we want to make sure that every single um, expert that is knowledgeable in terms of documentation gives their thoughts and inputs. And at the end of the day, we um, go through all of these reviews and then uh, an excellent template comes out or an excellent guide comes out. And so many persons benefit from it because we've gotten more than one person's thoughts and opinions and we're able to implement all of that. And then you can also consider the written questionnaire usability test where you basically just write um, a series of um, surveys and send out to users that have actually gone through that particular documentation. Send out these surveys to them and then ask them their experiences, what they thought was wrong with the documents, how they can they think it can be implemented or improved on. And then using that particular survey, you can retrieve your feedback and work towards that. And another way you can also carry out this usability test is through one-on-one -on -one interviews, where you get, um, get in touch with some of these writers or some of these users, and then have like um, a 30 minutes to one hour call going through the documentation and then getting to hear from their experiences and then also what they think could be done to the document to better improve on it. And then once you're done with all of these tests, you can carry out one individually or you can use multiple tests for your documentation, whatever the case may be. Once you're done with all of this, you should move on to interpret and record this data. And then once you've interpreted the data and you've recorded it and you're convinced that, okay, this is something worth implementing, you move on to implement the recommendations that you've received from that particular document, then retest um, the documentation to measure for effectiveness. Because, you know, a documentation um, usability test is not a one-time thing. As the product continues to grow, so does the documentation. And it's expected that every now and then you try to carry on this test, you know, just to make sure that everything is in order and areas that need to be improved on are being improved on to meet with the growth of that particular product um, capabilities. And then you also want to look um, provide means to receive feedback from each individual that is users that is coming on that documentation. Have a spot where they can come and write their feedbacks, either they experience an error, they can write that, whether they saw like a, um, a particular uh, misspelling in a sentence, they can also draw that to your attention, just making sure, making sure that at the end of the day, you're getting feedback whether the documentation is good enough, whether it was efficient, whether it was able to carry out the role that it was expected to, and um, how the experience generally was for these individual users. And then, why should you consider um, evaluating the documentation's usability? Well, for two reasons. First, the product reliability. It's a, it's a lot easier for most um, users to trust a product or even consider a product if the documentation makes the experience more pleasant. And so it's a lot easier to reach out to audiences and convert them when the product's documentation is of high quality and meets their needs. So you want to also put that into consideration because you want to have a solid product that you can pitch to both um, persons that want to invest and also people that want to adopt this particular product. Then another reason why you should consider evaluating the usability of our document is because of the user's experience. Because we want to be sure that a reader can accomplish their goal 
for coming to that particular documentation at the end of the day and they don't have to like um um go through other myths of information and they get satisfied with their experience at the end of the day then you also want to confirm that your document can help a less informed audience to either adopt this product to either write about this product or to even just have a better understanding of this particular product so that they can even refer this product to other individuals in case they have or this product documentation to other individuals that may be having similar challenges to them. And then finally, as, um, as technical writers, I want us to take note that an accurate technical documentation does not necessarily equal a helpful technical documentation. So no matter how much information you think exists within your technical documentation, there might be an area that the users seem to find dreadful and makes it difficult for them to actually have a usable experience while going through your technical documentation, which makes it something to put into consideration. And if your users do not find the document usable at the end of the day, the high chances that they're going to move on to the next project with a lot, um, a better documentation and um, even adopt it. Why? Because your documentation was not just, um, did not meet the needs or the goals that they're trying to achieve. And that is the thing that we should all take into consideration. So thank you so much for your time and thank you for listening. If you have any questions, you can reach out via Twitter or LinkedIn with your questions. You can also just connect with me on any of these platforms. I would be happy to connect. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you for this great presentation. and. Honestly, your enthusiasm is amazing. Like I actually want to go and run and write some knowledge-based articles. It's just really, um, you very passionately speaking about documentation, which I think it's neglected by, by a lot of projects. It's a very, very valuable speech. Um, and we have a couple of questions as well. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, if you don't mind uh, answering these. Um, one is the first one is from, oops, from Ruth. Um, do you suggest an open source project start with improving usability? Sorry, how do you suggest an open source project starts with improving usability? It's a huge task. Are there any quick wins you have seen in other projects? Okay, um, thank you so much, Joey. All right, um, to Ruth's question, um, the best way to actually tackle um, whether your documentation is actively being utilized or beneficial to your audience is asking them if they're actually using it. And you can do that through surveys and a feedback system. So um, a bit of a story, in Chaos Community, we were using our documentation for almost two years and we thought it was completely okay. And um, after two years, new community members joined in and so many persons kept asking questions that we thought it were available in our documentation. Now it was until that point that we found out that there's so many things that are still, there's so many aspects of documentation that needed to be updated. And we have not even touched that for a long time. And so we decided to do like a documentation audit within that time frame, based on people's feedback, we're able to like carry out an audit where we have like calls and everyone comes to point out an area they had an issue in. And so once you add, um, point out an area you had an issue in, we immediately create an issue towards that to tackle it immediately. So we don't have to forget that there was an issue existing here. And with the help of the community coming together to do like an audit every week, we're able to like address some of the issues that were existing in our documentation, we're able to like revamp the entire documentation, created a new handbook. And today, so many persons utilize it as an onboarding tool. And we also refer so many persons back to the handbook because we've updated and curated so much information in it as of now compared to how it was two years back. Amazing. And regarding onboarding tool, uh, you mentioned, is that a onboarding for technical? Uh, people so it's the it's like a developers onboarding you mentioned there okay so um it's more of a community-based handbook but oh. on the um software part we're still working on the software documentation currently but the community handbook itself is also used as an onboarding tool as well 
Okay, I see. Uh, now, he, here's a question. This, this came to my mind. Um, we live in a world where we are absorbing more and more information through videos and not reading. Is that impacting how technical documentation is changing? Do you see that people more into the, the, the video uh, uh, onboarding and documentation tools or the, for text, it will be always in writing? Well, um, with new changes comes the need to also like improve our practices. And like I mentioned in the section, there's need to actually mix up the uh, way of presenting information. So if our audience are looking more on the video side, then we should try to capture certain things that will be better understood in video formats. And we can also do that with video format. And if there are areas that need to be written more to, you know, to be more explained, we can also consider using um, writing to explain that concept. The idea of playing around with videos, pictures, and then writing is to keep the um, the readers more intrigued with what they're going through. Because you know that, oh, at this point, um, there's a picture that explains it. And if the picture does not do justice, the video next to it does justice. So I don't have to go back to the community and reach out to someone. The entire documentation covers either the videos, the pictures, and then the writing format as well. Thank you. Um, also, there's another question from Raul. What strategies or approaches do you find effective in maintaining a high developer spirit and engagement when writing documentation? And actually, this is something came up in your talk as well when you were saying that so the the technical writer should take a developer in like hand in hand they should sit down and discuss how things actually work like how do you put this in practice okay so um on my own end i'm going to just share an experience that i had with writing documentation where i had to work with developers and this was a product or a project that i had very little to no idea about and it was difficult for me to write on it without having to like work hand in hand with the developers. And so uh, most of the time where I had to like um, do research, I was sure that um, I reach out to the um, developers or the engineers, ask them the questions that I think should exist in the documentation. And so when they explain it for me, I am eager to convey that explanation into writing. And then I go on to do more research and then refine it. So now I'm using the knowledge that the engineers have with the knowledge that I have as a technical writer and combining all of that to produce a good um, written documentation that people can refer to at the end of the day. And uh, we're able to come up with something useful that so many persons could relate with and also learn with. And so in terms of maintaining a high developer spirited and engaging and engagement when writing technical documentation, I think it just have, uh, comes down to like the collaborate collaboration part of it where you're able to like work with these um, other um, engineers or the technical um, inclined people, ask questions when necessary, get insights at any point in time, and then put in your own input as a writer as well. Thank you. Well, we, we do need a high developer spirit because I think it's also in our project, in the multi project, one of the biggest challenges is uh, keeping up with the, with the changes, uh, especially back uh, backward compatibility, compatibility uh, breaking changes as well. And, you know, nobody likes to write tests and nobody likes to uh, write the documentation. So um, we were even thinking about some kind of like uh, uh, rewards for writing knowledge-based articles and documentation and technical documentation. Uh, do you have any experience with that? How to um, convince people to get into writing documentation? Okay, that's an interesting topic actually, because um... I think last month there was an argument on Twitter where so many persons were like, it seems there are not very, um, uh, so many persons interested in documentation part of um, contributing or even work generally. And we try to ask ourselves why. Is it because there's not enough outreach or does it look like documentation is a scary thing that so many people are not intrigued about? Well, um, for some communities that I have participated in, we try to see ways that we can, you know, um, bring in more um, writers. But the challenging thing is once people get in and they see that documentation is more than just writing articles, they get scared and then they're off um, to look for something else, either just writing articles or um, something else generally. 
But I think um, the reward system is a thing to consider for communities that have the funding, where you either recognize people for their um, contributions. I see so many people starting up writers program, and um, a thing that we did with our writers program in layer five is once you're able to put out an article, we recognize you by giving you a badge for that article you wrote. And so, like um, the little effort, such as just writing either a piece of documentation or an article or translating um, a recording, you get a badge for that at the end of the day. And um, this also made so many persons more um, enthusiastic about writing um, the writing part of contributions because they know that it's not all about coding or doing something else. I get this little rewards or recognition for. You also get a badge for the uh, writing form of contributions. Thank you. So we are we are on the good path, and then we should <clears throat> we should continue doing <clears throat> that with the recognition. Um, well, there there are no more questions at this point. Uh, if there will be, then maybe you will have to answer them in the in the YouTube video, since this is going to be forever on the interwebs. Um, and I thank you so much for the for the uh, viewers as well. Um, where can we reach you, Anita, if we would like to know more about uh, uh, evaluating usability? What's the best way? Okay, um, you can reach me on LinkedIn at Anita Ehuman or on Twitter with the same um, username, Anita Ehuman. I am very much available on those platforms. Thank you so much. Okay, dear viewers, uh, soon the next, uh, next session will start. Until then, we're going to take a little break. And thank you so much again. Bye.